Tan. Members, good morning. We formed a quorum and there's also the appointed time. May I call the meeting to order? Thank you for attending the morning meeting of the PWSC. In the 2016-17 legislative session, as at the last meeting, we have examined or approved 12 items uh, uh, granting $78.993.4 billion together with the nine papers carried over from the meeting on the 10th of June. We have 10 discussion items today and the uh, total funding sought is $51.8777.6 billion. Assuming that all papers are approved, then the funding approved cum cumulatively will be 22, but I believe Although we have uh, put in extra meeting sessions, I don't think we'll have enough time to uh, go through all of them. We'll do our best. And the total amount uh, sought is $130.871 billion. If we discount the $2.868.4 billion for land acquisition and block votes for computerization program, the total amount sought is 128 six billion dollars. May I remind members that if you have direct or indirect procuring interest in any of the item on the agenda today, please declare interest in accordance with 83 ROP 83A before you speak on the item. And may I draw members' attention to ROP 84 on uh, voting arrangements on item where you have a pecuniary interest. Item 1. 461th Central Kowloon Route Main Works, paper D by USC 2017-18-11. This paper recommends to upgrade 641th to CAT A and an estimated cost of 42, uh, 4236, $3.9 million dollars in money of the day. Prices. On the 17th of March, the administration consulted the transport panel on the project. However, it did not get the majority support of the members voting on this item on that day. Please refer to Appendix 5, where there is a compromise uh, option proposed by the administration. The uh, main points of uh, discussion at the panel is already tabled for members' information. For the uh, attendance list from the administration, please refer to uh, the uh, paper already tabled. I understand that the administration would like to give us a briefing on this item. So I give the floor to Mr. Yao, Undersecretary. Thank you. As said by you, Chairman, uh, on, uh, in March, uh, on the 17th, we consulted the transport panel, uh, and the main members supported the item. It's just that they would want us to do more uh, for Prosperity Garden uh, in relation to a noise and uh, air quality. They would like us uh, to um, have more mitigation measures. So uh, we've now come up with a compromise uh, model and would like to uh, brief members on the compromise model ASAP uh, now. Uh, because uh, this was not uh, thoroughly discussed at, at the relevant transport panel, but members said that if we uh, could overcome this problem, then they will support this item. Mr. Chong, please. Or rather, Mr. Lo Kok Wah. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, may I refer members to the plan here. This is uh, the noise mitigation measures in the environment permit. Well, in this 118 meter noise enclosure, it's going to cover uh, Caspian Road flyover just of uh, blocks two and three of Prosperity Garden. And then there'll be 140 a semi-enclosure further down, and that will uh, deal with uh, the section of the flyover of uh, Block 1 of Prosperity Garden, and then there will be a 200-meter full enclosure. This will satisfy the um, requirement for noise and uh, air quality control and 1,600 flats of a uh, prosperous garden will benefit. 
that would be a further reduction of 10 decibel, and uh, on average uh, it would be 30 decibel. And then we'll be able to reduce 20,000 uh, tons of CO2 using uh, this uh, project, and uh, we will also uh, cut RSP uh, exhaust from vehicles. Having said so, residents of Prosperous Garden We want to uh, extend uh, this full enclosure uh, for another 60 meters to uh, cover um, the uh, Yamate Catholic Primary School. These two requirements are not uh, the one of the recommendations of the um, EIA report. And now, if we add the semi enclosure here. Then uh, the whole length will be over 230 meters, and we need to uh, have a tunnel design here, and we will need to include fire services installations, including a means of escape, and also a massive ventilation system. If you know the place well, you will know that there are four viaducts and or three. Um, uh, trunk rows here. So if a means of escape uh, is actually uh, impossible to have a means of escape here, and for the massive ventilation system in the existing uh, flyover and the one to be built, they do not have enough loading capacity to support such a massive ventilation system. So again, it is infeasible. For this full enclosure, Even if uh, were to be done, it would only um, reduce uh, the um, noise level by an other one decibel for the three households uh, affected, and for this, uh, only another fifty-seven households would benefit. Um, by uh, having uh, one decibel less in terms of noise. On the 17th of March, at the transfer panel meeting, members from uh, different political parties asked us to uh, address the aspirations of our residents of Prosperous Garden, and they passed a motion to that effect. Uh, we have uh, uh, studied these proposals uh, very uh, carefully, and we've come up with a compromise model. Now, for the middle section, instead of 100 meters semi enclosure, at first uh, it will only cover the eastbound lane. Now it will cover the whole segment. There will be a vertical opening. At this point, to satisfy the uh, fire safety requirements, and this opening uh, will uh, be uh, far away from Prosperous Garden compared to the original recommendation in the IA report, and the uh, effect for noise insulation uh, will be similar. And there won't be um, observable uh, impact on our air quality. And the cost is about six hundred and seventy million dollars. Now, for <coughs> uh, because of this full enclosure, we can uh, reduce uh, some uh, noise barriers. So uh, the extra cost is just uh, $520 million. And for this side, we're going to extend the uh, full enclosure by about 40 meters instead of 60. This will benefit 57 households in addition. They see the noise level cut by over one decibel. And the 
estimated cost is about four hundred and fifty million dollars. Um, lower than uh, the cost uh, for um, carrying out the recommendation by the households. Now we are aware of the aspirations of uh, the Prosperous Garden. Now, for the compromise model, uh, there would not be marked um, change on impact on air quality. We have consulted Professor Lau Kai Hon of Hong Kong USD. Uh, Dr. Lau is willing to uh, provide professional advice free of charge. And then, uh, according to Dr. Lau, these compromise model will not adversely affect the air quality for sensitive receivers in Prosperous Garden. So in summary, our proposal is uh, easier to implement and less expensive uh, than the proposals by the administration while giving us a very similar effect. For the extension of the noise barrier in the north, our proposal is uh, will give more or less the same effect as the suggestion by the uh, Residents, and yet it's much cheaper. It's about four hundred and fifty million dollars for the uh, middle section noise carrier. The extra cost is about five, uh, about a, a four point eight. Um, I mean, uh, four point eight million, four eighty million dollars. If we are to adopt the compromise model, we will uh, need to uh, seek approval under the Road Works Ordinance. Take into account the time required for the statutory and executive procedures uh, that would delay the completion of the project by at least two years. <coughs> and therefore, the people who are intended to be benefited by the project will not get that benefit. And also, every year, there will be another three billion Hong Kong dollars in terms of uh, um, economic efficiency in terms of uh, traveling time reduction. This will not be benefited by the uh, residents. And also the environment and other uh, unquantifiable benefits are not taken into account either. And also because of inflation, for every year of delay, there will be another $2 billion of cost involved. So in order not to delay the central Kowloon route, uh, project, we would propose that we will, as early as possible, start with this uh, proposal as we have outlined just now. Anything to add, please? No, none, Mr. Chairman. All right. Uh, this, uh, Mr. Chair, this is about the Q and A. I have a question about that process. Now, this uh, new proposal had not been ever discussed by this uh, committee or by this panel. And uh, we do not want to be asking uh, the questions by 4321 method. Well, uh, I totally understand what you're talking about, so we will handle this uh, flexibly. Uh, Mr. Chan, you have something to say? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, basically, he said the administration uh, proposed using another project uh, to uh, public works project item uh, to continue with this proposal. Uh, I understand what you want to talk about, uh, Mr. Chan. Let me say it this way, and that is the proposal that we see that is the 461TH paper. There is no mention of this compromise uh, proposal. And you're saying that you want to uh, propose this as a separate uh, PW uh, public works item. Now, I believe that in the end, this new proposal uh, should be included in the 
original proposal that is in uh, uh, PWSC 461TH. I mean, otherwise, it, it is not uh, feasible. However, in terms of timing, is this uh, good enough? Is this uh, practicable? What is your response? Uh, Mr. Yao? Yes. Mr. Chair, the, for this compromise proposal, it is to respond to members' uh, views concerning the proposal. In fact, the f three out of the four motions concern this. And in order not to delay the project, we do not want to change the uh, item. And I'm talking about the 461TH item, uh, the scope of work for this item. We believe that we can come up with a new item, a new proposal to get the member's approval as soon as possible. And the implementation of works can be done concurrently with uh, 461TH. I think your message is clear. That is to say, you can uh, propose to the LegCo at different stages the works concerned. And the compromise proposal and the uh, main works can be done concurrently and uh, not to uh, let the uh, uh, compromised uh, project be carried out after the trunk project in order not to cause delay. Is that your intention? That is correct, Mr. Chair, because we're talking about seven to eight years in terms of the entire project, but for the enclosure for uh, sound protection, it is a much, much shorter uh, and smaller project, and therefore they can be done concurrently. Uh, Mr. Chair, I understand that the residents also want us to carry out the projects concurrently. In fact, we have already started with the preparatory work for this um, proposal. And also my colleagues have mentioned that the $150 million of uh, cost will be saved from the sound barrier that was already originally proposed in the uh, project item 461TH. So there is some savings. Uh, Mr. Chair, I still am not sure about the itemization. You s basically, it said that there has to be gazetting and also there will have to be consultation concerning the road construction. Now, by so doing, by segregating this into two parts, th those need procedures need not be gone through. Is that right? I mean, I see the date here as 26th of May, and uh, I'm just wondering, and I'm sure my colleagues are also concerned, whether the, uh, the administration can provide us with more information about uh, taking this out as a um, separate item. Yes, I understand that Ms. Chan is concerned that for various reasons possible, such as uh, insufficient consultation of residents, uh, then it may adversely affect this uh, compromise proposal. What is your response? Uh, Mr. Chair, because this is another public works uh, item, then we will have to go through the due procedure for that uh, for that as well concerning the uh, road design, etc. And we will also have to de uh, gazette the uh, item as well as carry out consultation. All these will be carried out as normal. But, but this is a very small project, and therefore we believe that um, it will not take a lot of time. And with the support of the uh, local residents and with the due process of gazetting, etc., we will come to the LegCo for funding. And if you're supportive, then we will get the funding to do the work. Now, the early stage of preparation to the uh, actual implementation of the works, we believe it will not be longer than the seven to eight years that we're talking about for the entire project. So it is completely feasible that it can be done within the time of the project. 
All right. I think uh, members have spoken about their concerns, and the administration is uh, confident that it can be done within the time. And so now let us uh, start with our Q and A session. Please press a button if you want to ask a question. Uh, Chen Chen Ying, first round, four minutes. Just to question on the cost. The total cost is uh, uh, the total cost is 4.236 billion, and the this part is 2.124 billion, and there is a savings of 150 million. And uh, so is that the, just to confirm that that is the case. Now for the reprovisioning, there'll be the Jade Market and the uh, Dermatology Clinic, as well as a library. I would like to know how much is spent on reprovisioning of these three facilities um, uh, and individually for the Jade Market operators in uh, how much compensation will be meted out. And I also see that there is a 31 million, uh, which is cost for furniture and facilities. Uh, I've not seen this before uh, for furniture and facilities, expenses. Can you talk about that, please? And also, I see that there will be multiple contracts, and at least one will be new uh, contract m model, and the others will be the uh, original or the uh, normal uh, contract model. I would like to know what circumstances would merit a new type of contract. And uh, um, please, Mr. Chair, concerning the um, sound barrier uh, reduction budget, it is 2.1 billion, and that is all inclusive with our compromise proposal. If we can get to the funding from another item, then this 150 million savings will be reflected here. And therefore, the construction cost will be less 150 million. But because it is a separate item, and that other item is not being proposed for uh, funding at present, and therefore, we will have to propose on the basis of uh, on the basis of on the basis of forty two thousand three hundred sixty three point nine million as for the itemization of the uh, different items perhaps I can do that after the provide the information after the meeting as for contracts. We now have different contract uh, forms for the new uh, project. Our consideration for the contract is as follows, because it, it, we will want to strengthen the communication between the parties to the contract and where we think that there is actual room for for lowering of uh, risks for this kind of contract, contract, we will use the new contract type. Otherwise, we will use the traditional contract type. I would also want to mention here that because for this particular item, it is a rather big uh, item in terms of scale of the project, and therefore, for the New type of uh, contract we will uh, we will have to build on our past experience before we use the new uh, contract type. Chan Chi Chun, four minutes. Now the government said that because of prior prioritization, there will have to be this uh, central Kowloon route main works put in front of us at this moment. Now the LegCo is about. Uh, one more month to the end of its session. 
And of course, this has to be uh, done very in an expedited manner. Uh, that at least that's what you think. Otherwise, you would not take it to this panel. Now, I think you have to take this back to the uh, to the relevant committee, like the Yamate, uh, the Street Sleepers project. It was taken back to the relevant committee as well for discussion. Now. But I understand that you think that this needs to be expedited, this uh, project. Mm. But on the other hand, we've only just heard about the details here. And the 17th of March meeting was actually the result of previous discussions. And there were two uh, sessions uh, that went before that meeting. And I myself and Ms. Cheung here, uh, we were uh, we chaired those two meetings, and at that time there was no mention of this kind of uh, ex uh, sound barrier or this kind of proposal. And it was at the last meeting that there was a cross-party uh, support for the turning down of the proposal, and uh, only then did you see the light and come up with this particular uh, proposal. I know that a lot of residents have uh, grave reservations or actually outright object to this so-called compromise proposal. Now, on the other hand, we have to uh, balance the situation. I mean, we at the Public Works Subcommittee, of course, cannot have deputations. But I think the in the other committee, there will have to be relevant work done. And that is to call the relevant parties to come up and to to express their views so that we know whether we want to support this new proposal or not. Well, the political parties I've heard have uh, some of the political parties have already reached a consensus with the government. But for me, I cannot at this point say I support you or not. I do not know. I really do not know whether certain parties are in agreement to this proposal already. And uh, perhaps we should uh, stop the meeting and uh, adjourn the meeting and then get to know uh, the way forward and uh, get to understand the background and not to just support the government in their proposal. In past meetings, we uh, actually, some of us proposed uh, this compromise scheme, and the administration said no. We said that uh, we uh, can uh, uh, do something uh, to. Um, avoid a tunnel option, and then uh, they said no. I'd like to know since when has the administration started to uh, give the green light to this compromise proposals which were proposed um, by some of us very long ago. I don't think we have had ample discussion on the new measures yet. So Mr. Ray Chen has expressed his views as regards whether the administration should uh, deal with this uh, in the relevant panel uh, or uh, in um, the complaints uh, or using our complaints mechanism is not for me to decide. But I have expressed our views. Mr. Yao, I understand that um, members may have concern uh, uh, over our uh, handling of this matter. But in our letter to the uh, PWSC, we explained our we explained the reasons. Because at the transport panel meeting, in the main members supported the project. However, although they raised a very important concern, and also um, Prosperous Gardens' uh, concern about the design of the uh, noise enclosure and um, the uh, air quality mitigation measures. This is the concern right from the start. As a matter of jurisprudence, or uh, if we to 
uh, it's not uh, absolutely necessary to uh, fully satisfy the uh, demands of prosperous garden and uh, take into account uh, um, uh, the use of public funds. Uh, we decided uh, to propose uh, the model as it was to the panel. However, having considered very carefully the views of the panel, uh, because uh, the project is important to the whole of Kowloon, and uh, if uh, we amend uh, the uh, design of the project, that would mean uh, extra cost and extra time. And uh, having considered different factors, we've come up with this compromise scheme. We believe we'll be uh, we we uh, able to address the concerns of uh, most political parties and um, and uh, residents of Prosperous Garden. We may not be able to please all, but we believe uh, this compromise scheme uh, can um, address most of their concerns and is also more efficient in terms of uh, time. So we have proposed uh, this compromise scheme to uh, the PWC. Please do understand that it is indeed um, a compromise with your funding support, we can start the project in the second half of this year. Thank you, Mr. Yu Wing. Four minutes. We do support the construction of the Central Kowloon route. The crux of the matter is uh, whether there should be a full enclosure of. Prosperous Garden and the reprovisioning of the uh, Yamate uh, car park. So these are the two uh, sticky issues, and LACHCO should focus on how we address uh, these two problems. We should not um, uh, refer the matter back to the transport panel or to the uh, complaints division. These procedures will only uh, delay the whole project. We should first decide whether there is any urgency for construction of the Central Kalu route. If yes, I think we should let PWSC to examine this proposal very carefully. Uh, has the administration addressed the two uh, critical points raised at the transfer panel? And then uh, we can press ahead with the project because the traffic congestion in Kowloon is getting worse, and uh, it will take a few years before the uh, project can be uh, completed. I disagree that we should refer this matter back to the transport panel. And as for the uh, full enclosure, the administration has responded by uh, some improvement measures. As far as I know, residents of Prosperous Garden are not happy that there is only one exhaust um, outlet, and the exhaust uh, would affect them as well. According to the paper, the very uh, consulted uh, professor, Professor Lau of um, the uh, Environment uh, Faculty of Hong Kong USC, but uh, is that sufficient? Uh, because residents may say that uh, the advice of one scholar may not be good enough. How can we um, allay the concerns of residents effectively? And what about the Yang Ma Te Car Park reprovisioning? How are you going to uh, go about the uh, reprovisioning of the public car park? Under Secretary, I thank Mr. Yu for your support so that we can continue to discuss the project here. Can I invite my colleague to explain to you the design of uh, the exhaust outlet? Uh, they've already confirmed that there would not be uh, adverse impact, and Dr. Lau is a third party to confirm our design. And I think we should have confidence in Dr. Lau. T. D. Please explain to us the re pre reprovisioning of the public car park. Mr. Chong, without the Central Kowloon route. Cascoin Road flyover 
is already there even without the uh, central Kowloon route. That means vehicles, emissions would even be closer to the households. But uh, with a noise enclosure or semi or full enclosure, then uh, the uh, units of Prosperous Garden uh, will be shielded. Can I ask members in the public gallery to uh, comply with uh, the rules for um, members of the public in the public gallery. We welcome you uh, to observe our meeting, but please uh, follow our rules. And there are various channels for you to express your views. However, a yelling and shouting uh, in the public gallery would disrupt our meeting, and that is not permissible. Once again, I want to thank you for um, observing this meeting this morning. For the compromise scheme, the vertical opening will be even further away from Prosperous Garden. The experts from Hong Kong UST is of the view that uh, this new arrangement uh, would not um, uh, the um, uh, air quality of Prosperous Garden will not be worse off under this arrangement. Regarding the impact on noise sensitive receivers in the uh, vicinity, well, we have complied with the legal requirements. We have an expert on air quality from the uh, consulting team here. Let me see if uh, he has got anything to add to facilitate members' understanding. I think because this is a matter of concern to many of us, so I, I believe uh, we're happy to hear more about the mit mitigating measures because uh, they uh, talked about an air uh, purification system. I think uh, we would like to hear more. Mr. Chiu, Mr. Frankie Chiu. Thank you. When we did the EIA, when we, what, what, what is the usual procedures for our EIA? We adhere strictly to the technical guidelines by EPD and we have also adopted their computer simulating model and uh, we will we'll, um, ca calculate uh, the impact on various sensitive receivers. Uh, we have a uh, vehicle number, speed, and uh, also the um, emission rate in estimating the emissions. We also take into account the uh, impact of uh, temperature and humidity throughout the year. There are different noise mitigation measures along the route uh, there is that that we have a, a, a semi enclosure for enclosure along um, the route uh, for uh, the um, uh, middle section uh, there's the vertical opening and uh, the um, exhaust would be dispersed uh, and then we uh, will um, operate, uh, we'll run our computer model uh, throughout the year to gauge the impact on noise sensitive receivers and we have to uh, take into account uh, the um, concentration of uh, air pollutants uh, from data of EPD. The primary school and uh, the primary schools nearby and also Prosperous Garden and uh, also uh, various uh, public facilities in the garden are taken into account and uh, this can be found in the relevant section of the EIA report. And uh, for the uh, opening of uh, the summer enclosure uh, is far away from the Prosperous Garden. And according to UIA, the air quality there will comply with the relevant requirements. And then uh, the vertical opening will be extended uh, in the uh, southwestern 
side under the um, compromise scheme, and uh, these are the factors considered in our simulation. We also explain to us the air purification system. Thank you. In Central Kowloon route, with an uh, air purification system. Exhaust or emissions within uh, the tunnel would be collected and purified before releasing to the atmosphere. Uh, we can at least uh, cut 80% of uh, the uh, carbon dioxide, uh, sulfur dioxide, and RSP. That is nitrogen dioxide. So uh, there is bound to be uh, improvements to uh, the air quality of Yamate. Uh, perhaps uh, Mr. Yu Yu can uh, wait for another round. Maybe other members have similar questions to ask. Mr. Lau Kwok Fan, four minutes. Thank you. We agree that uh, we understand that the CKR can improve the uh, traffic of uh, central Kowloon. But we have to take into account the interests of different stakeholders. Mr. Yong Chi Hei, a district councillor serving Prosperous Garden, has expressed a lot of concerns about the air quality and noise. And it's been a few years, and finally, we have got this compromise scheme. Both the uh, Bureau and the Department have uh, always uh, said no to their previous uh, suggestions. I'd like to know how long has uh, this uh, process have uh, taken. Now, I don't quite get uh, what uh, Mr. Lau's question is. Uh, he You have consistently failed to uh, submit a better model. Is that one of the reasons for the delay of the project under Secretary? We have uh, spent a lot of time to address not just the concerns of uh, Prosperous Garden, but of course um, they have been more outspoken on the project. The scheme proposed to the Transport Department has really satisfied the uh, legal requirements and also um, make major improvements to the situation of Prosperous Garden. But of course, our residents and members may feel differently. And therefore, at the last meeting, they strongly asked the administration to spend more resources to satisfy the demands of uh, Prosperous Garden. Now, f when uh, carrying out projects, you should not just aim at satisfying the legal requirements. You should also uh, save. Uh, you also address the concerns of stakeholders. Sometimes uh, more haste, more waste, uh, because uh, the further you wait, uh, the um, higher the cost will be. If you had uh, done it earlier, perhaps you could have saved uh, more than billions of dollars. And this compromise proposal, obviously. It is uh, for the protection of the residents of Yamate, and it is an extra project that's going to be proposed. I do not know whether you have talked to Yonchi Hei, uh, a member, or the Prosperous Garden residents. Have you explained to them? Uh, now, please, for those uh, observers to this LegCo uh, session, please keep quiet. Otherwise, um, I will really have to remind you of the order of the LegCo if you do not comply with the rules uh, for those seated in the public um, uh, seating area. We will have to uh, ask you again to be cooperative. But I, I would like to thank you for coming to observe the session. Now, Mr. Chair, concerning the question just now and the concern of the prosperous garden, uh, the department and the government 
have listened to their views. We have collected their written views. They have given us objection letters, and also Mr. Chan, Lecho member, had also said, mentioned that, that there had been face-to-face -face meetings, and the different political parties have also talked to the government, and therefore their views are totally clear to us. Have you explained to them the latest uh, compromise proposal to them, please? Mr. Chair, this proposal is in response to the views expressed in the last meeting, um, express those views expressed in the last meeting by the electrical members, and we are fully clear about the opinions and views of the prosperous garden residents. We, on the one hand, respond to their views, but at the same time, we also have to consider the timing of the project and also the use of public funding. Yes. Yes, as I have mentioned, uh, you, you should go to the prosperous garden residents, explain to them the proposal as well. Mr. Chair, this is going to be a separate uh, proposal that will come up to the Public Works Committee, and we will go through the due process, including consultation and gazetting, as I've mentioned just now. Ms. Chen Shuk Chong, four minutes. I have a number of questions. I'm looking at the... Uh, May 26, 19, uh, 2016 meeting minutes of the Yaochim Mong uh, District Committee. And now that was less than a month ago, and this compromise proposal was not tabled at that meeting. I'm sure the residents do not want to follow up the entire uh, Main Works Central Kowloon route. Um, but uh, on the other hand, uh, it's been delayed for so long, and Mr. Lau Kok Pan just now asked how many years had there been, has this been delayed for? And it's been over three years, as far as I can see from the documents. And in the last meeting, there were motions which were supported by the various political parties. It's because we're all concerned about the uh, residents' uh, views and opinions. So you should actually first consult the residents and also allow sufficient time for the district councils to also debate on the issue. And if you have their approval, then it will be much easier for us. You, the administration, should well understand that. And the transport panel have not had the um, opportunity to discuss this and then um, come up to the Public Works Committee. Uh, but th that is to say, all of a sudden, you give us this compromise proposal uh, without all that uh, discussion having gone on beforehand. Now, also, in discussing uh, the new contract model, I think we have discussed this so-called new contract model before in our meetings. Uh, and just now we heard from the administration the use of this contract uh, form is to this new engineering contract form is to facilitate more communication between the two parties to the contract and to mitigate risks. What risks are you talking about? And uh, another question, we know that there had been certain lab uh, testing of uh, concrete samples which had been uh, fiddled with. Now, I would like to know how you monitor the lab labs and also the contractors. How do you supervise them? Will you have more powers? Will you be more uh, uh, on hand, uh, hands-on, will you be more hands-on in the supervision work? And what about monitoring of uh, quality of concrete for the project? Now, uh, for this contract, this new engineering contract form, can you give us a bit more information? In fact, you've done that uh, in a few times before, but uh, there are still questions today. So if you can uh, explain this new engineering contract form uh, in summary, please. Yes. This new civil engineering contract form 
as far as our policy goes, we would want to promote the use of this new contract form. The uh, advantage of that is that in partnering in the uh, in contract environment, the two parties to the contract, that is to say the employer and the contractor in this cooperative environment under the contract would, at the end of the day, in terms of cost and also the smooth running of the, pro of the contract, it would be good. And a few years ago, we have come up with this new form, and there are contracts that are running under this new form. And when we look at, but there, these are uh, not too many, just a few, but we do see that the trend is good from the results of these uh, projects utilizing these contracts. And therefore, we propose that this new contract form be used. But if it's not used, the department will have to explain why it is not adopted. There are different situations to each project. And of course, uh, the department will have to explain why they have not uh, utilized this new form. As for mitigation of risks, we believe that this will be uh, conducive to uh, mitigation of risk by utilizing this new form. For larger projects, we want to set up a kind of a target cost, to use target cost as a component of the new engineering contract form. And actually, next month, I will be going back to the uh, Public Works uh, Committee uh, to explain the works of the um, project cost uh, unit, and uh, and at that point we will uh, also that is for the development affairs uh, panel. We will also further explain the operation of the new engineering contract form. That's in the July meeting, correct? Now, can you please uh, talk about the uh, concrete uh, supervision, etc. Now, in terms of geotechnical uh, works, perhaps mm, members would be concerned. In terms of geo exploration, we have done more work for this project. In terms of vertical boring into the uh, gr underground, we have complied with the geotechnical guidelines, and we have exceeded what's required in the guidelines. And also, in one of the contracts, we have already started tendering uh, pro the tendering process, process, and we will do more vertical boring, and so that we will be able to get a an even better uh, understanding of the situation underground. And also, specifically, we have a, an at gradient. Um, boring and drilling along the line of the tunnel. And after this is done, we will have very good information concerning the uh, geo situation, underground situation along the tunnel alignment. And we hope that through this kind of work, we will have uh, uh, very good understanding of the uh, geo situation underground. Can you perhaps, uh, Mr. Chair, can they perhaps give us more information uh, in a written form after this meeting? Yes, please provide the written uh, information. Uh, Mr. Lung Kwahong, please. Uh, Mr. Chair, I am a LegCo member. Uh, I am here to monitor and supervise your work. Uh, let us not always say that we are a Chinese person. Well, I am a LegCo member. Now, I would want to thank you. Uh, you are a... Um, now, really, I have to uh, scold you. Uh, otherwise, you would not tell us about all this uh, kind of uh, vertical boring and etc. You would not be doing that unless we uh, scolded you. 
uh, because we criticized you in previous meetings that you have not done sufficient work in terms of getting to know the underground situation. And uh, therefore, it was with our criticism that now you have done the work, so-called uh, vertical boring, etc. Now, uh, uh, Mr. Leung Kwa Hong, can you please ask your question, please? Now, Wang Kwa Kin had not been uh, now, please do not criticize other LegCo members uh, unnecessarily. But Wang Kuo Kin was uh, criticizing me or us, saying that we're delaying the project. Now, this is something that's very straightforward. Even secondary school uh, students would understand. I mean, uh, what you're doing is just uh, having rounds and rounds of meetings. Uh, without results. I mean, if you are fair and square, that is uh, good. I mean, everyone would want to get more information. And uh, you, everyone would need an umpire. Any ball game would need an umpire. And any rules of uh, the ball game would not be uh, useful unless you are fair and square in your, in your play. I mean, we are just asking for information papers, and it seems to be so difficult uh, for you to provide them. That's the first point. The second point, um, the reason why we're in this mess is, is because you did not go to the transport panel. You did not comply with the due procedures. Uh, Chairman, you always say that uh, we can only discuss what's within our own ambit, but the transport panel had not uh, passed this yet. And you're talking to me about due process? I mean, what's beneficial to you, you implement. What's be not beneficial to you, you would not implement. Do you want to have a joint signature of uh, 39 members or what have you against and criticize me for standing in the way of this uh, main contract? Well. We went together with Chiang Lai Wan uh, to the to the site, and I remember the residents were so angry. And it's been a few years past. In 2013, the district, the Yao Chim Wang District Council said that this is not viable, and uh, you've done nothing. And uh, now you come up with this. Now, give us information concerning these uh, new uh, contracts. The MTRC gets 5%, and then you have checkers of the checkers and checkers of the checkers of the checkers. And uh, this seems so watertight, as you would want to describe it. Do you Cost for run and Project slippage is not because of our filibustering. Will not be at site to uh, to be in the way of workers uh, doing ground investigation or working on the site. The only prob uh, question I heard from uh, Mr. Lung Kwok Hong's uh, speech is whether there are examples of the new engineering contract form. One of the projects using the NEC form. Uh, your Speaking time is up, Mr. Lang Hong. Please do not shout uh, in your seat. Mr. Lang Hong, silence, please. Uh, Mr. Hong, P.S. Uh, I am actually uh, rever relaying your request uh, to uh, Mr. Hong, the P.S. I ask him. Uh, I asked if he uh, can provide more information on e NEC uh, form at the development panel, or can that be done today, Mr. Han, Chairman? So, from what I uh, gathered uh, from Mr. Lang Ko Hong, he would like uh, to have examples of projects using the NEC form. I'll try to uh, submit a paper on this ASAP. All right, Dr. Jiang Lai Wan. Thank you. 
Of course, uh, in principle, we have to improve the uh, traffic situation in Hong Kong. But as we know, in when they are in the urban areas, they are bound to be some impacts on the air quality and quality of life of residents nearby, and therefore. The administration must go about its uh, consultation work properly, and you should be sympathetic to the situation of residents. I think residents gave you a lot of uh, views during public consultation, but uh, it's as if you've turned a deaf ear to their comments. As Mr. Ray Chen, member. Uh, residents uh, came to uh, complain to LegCo twice in the last uh, term, and then, as Mr. Leung Kuo Hong said, we uh, visited the uh, site numerous times. And DAB has met with you for over 100 times. Every time you uh, just some um, when pressed. You gave us a little bit more, and I said today you have not fully addressed uh, the concerns of affected residents. They want a sixty meter full enclosure phasing a Yamate Catholic Primary School. I'm very grateful. Finally, you've agreed to provide a full enclosure, but only 40 meters long. So what's the point? Why can't you provide an other 20 meters so that uh, the classrooms do not have uh, to close all their windows in class? And they want an hundred and forty meters of full enclosure at the bend. All right, you have a vert, you have a semi enclosure with a vertical opening. Yes, a little bit better. Still, you have not fully addressed their concerns. I understand that some of the officials here. Have yet to visit the site. Can you go to the uh, to meet the residents directly and explain to them? Because your explanation is bound to be clearer than ours, so you listen to their aspirations directly. It is better than for me to relate their views to you. So direct communication. This and the CE designates. Have uh, have said that um, they should uh, listen to uh, the views of the public more often. So please do so. As regards the opening, the 145 meters, please uh, see whether you can lengthen the full enclosure as far as possible for. Um, if you really need a vertical opening, please uh, be as close to the uh, police station as possible. After all, there aren't, um, the uh, police station aren't really active. So please see if this is possible under Secretary. Uh, the first part of uh, Dr. Jiang's question, a compromise. Because it is a compromise, we have to take into account different factors. On the one hand, we note the views of members and residents, but we also have to consider the um, effect and also the cost. As shown in our presentation, the compromise scheme will be able to achieve the effects very much similar to those demanded by the residents. At the same time, it is a uh, are more affordable, so we have to take these two factors into account as well. 
And how will the uh, enclosures be done? Can I invite the highways department to explain to us uh, what uh, the vertical opening is about? Director of Highways. Under the compromise model, we have a new item. Just like uh, other items, we will uh, gazette the proposal. We will uh, go through all the required consultation process. We will explain to the district council uh, the arrangement and details of the project. For sure, this will be done. Uh, will you attend uh, meetings of uh, residents? And can you uh, do so before Gesato? I think you can start communicating with residents before Gesato. Usually, we go to district councils to explain even before Gesato. If need be, we can explain to affected residents directly. What about the uh, vertical opening? Can you shorten the part where there's going to be a vertical opening? The compromise scheme is able to satisfy the uh, demand of residents. It will achieve an effect very similar to uh, a proposed scheme by the residents. Can we uh, reduce the extent of vertical opening? Now we have uh, to look at this from a technical perspective. If we have more vertical panels, we have to revisit the technical feasibility of the project covering fire safety and structural loading issues. We will have to examine it very carefully before we can tell you whether it is feasible. Dr. Kwakaki, this project proves our view that the government is a wasteful government. Now is 43 odd billion dollars. In 2013, four years ago, the Yaochimong District Council passed a motion to ask the uh, administration to uh, tackle the uh, noise insulation issue better. Back then, the cost was only $10 billion. We asked for universal retirement protection. The cost is only $50 billion. Now, the cost has uh, escalated from $10 billion in 2013 to $40 odd billion dollars now. So an additional $30 odd billion dollars of your own making. This is taxpayers' money, and you put the blame on LACHCO and residents. And the cost adjustment factor. $16 billion, 42% of the project cost, plus $2.2 .2 billion for contingency. So together, there are 54% of the total cost on contingencies and price adjustment. Everyone knows how to submit a tender given the subject, given the budget here. Of course, for sure, they will eat up all your $40 billion reserved for the project. When we want assistance for the elderly and disadvantaged, you will say no. Now for this, the tendering system is so dated. You have um, the contingencies and provision for price adjustment account for over 54% of the total cost, and I'm sure such a big infrastructure project uh, will uh, be awarded to a China-owned company, or maybe it will partner up with some large companies in Hong Kong. So 
And if you uh, want extra cost, uh, you can bypass the council because you have an extra ten odd billion dollars for that. So you don't have to seek our approval for cost overrun. You don't have to be accountable. You can continue to um, have cost overrun because it's already factored in. You are asking for over forty percent of uh, the cost for price adjustment. How can that be? This is very risky because uh, this way, in this way, you don't have to be accountable. And when residents, including those from um, Prosperous Garden, uh, the uh, Noise mitigation measures can be done later, and you can uh, say no to these measures because uh, you call them too expensive. Please explain to us how, how come the uh, project cost has jumped from ten odd billion dollars to forty odd billion dollars under secretary. Uh, perhaps uh, uh, Dr. Kwok has not fully uh, understood uh, the uh, cost breakdown. Perhaps uh, using this slide, we can explain to you how come the cost has increased. Uh, some of the items are rather, in fact, are necessary. Thank you. May I refer members to this slide? Uh, back then, uh, in 2002, the price estimate was about a ten billion dollars. As at um, uh, uh, prices in October 2002, back then it was about ten billion dollars. That was based on a preliminary design, and uh, the estimate uh, was 15.1 billion dollars. As at September 2016, because of inflation, and as I said, uh, the design in 2002 was a very preliminary one. And as we proceeded, we um, carried out ground investigation. We considered uh, the views of uh, the the public, and we've made adjustment to the project. The latest estimate can be seen here. Now we have improved the design to come up with the uh, final estimate we are seeking. As for this kind of improved design, it is uh, basically fourteen point five billion dollars. And together, it is uh, 29.6361 billion. And this is 2016 uh, uh, cost. And for the addition or the improve, uh, improved design, if I may, I would like to give you some examples to explain why we need this kind of uh, improvement in terms of the design. Now, for this tunnel, it passes by some developed areas, and therefore, in its design, the design of the tunnel, uh, on top of the tunnel, there are these buildings, and that's why we have to strengthen the design of what's underground so that it would not affect the structural safety of the buildings and also that there is uh, uh, protection of redevelopment potentials of these buildings and areas which are highly uh, dense in terms of population. At the same time, we have to be wary about um, vibrations at service, road service, as well as settlement. And therefore, we and also seepage of water. We therefore have to do strengthening work to avoid <clears throat> the possibility of these occurring. And as I have mentioned, in terms of uh, survey sur uh, surveys, uh, we have to do the necessary surveys of the buildings and of what's underground, so as to be uh, safe and. Uh, 
foolproof in our works. As I've mentioned, we also have a, an air purification system to improve the air quality in the surrounding areas and to comply with the air quality requirements for the three ventilation buildings because we need sufficient area to install these uh, air purification systems and for the construction of these ventilation buildings. Therefore, we have uh, and also, we have over 1,000 meters of uh, sound barrier and also uh, noise enclosure, as well as uh, green platforms. Uh, therefore, we have some uh, 100 meters times 10 meters times 60 meters uh, noise enclosure. And this noise enclosure will be the biggest uh, steel structured noise enclosure in Hong Kong ever. All these are improvement designs and all of them are very expensive. I will not go into the details here and it is about 4.4 .4 billion dollars in total and with all these improvements uh, it adds up to what our proposed funding is for this project. Now, if you can provide a written submission on the basis of what you talked about just now, that would be good. Uh, Ms. Lau. Uh, Mr. Chair, a lot of us are concerned about the uh, over-expenditure uh, problem, and I think it is very serious. And I'm still worried about the health of the residents even after the completion of the project because I think air pollution problem is very serious. In the western uh, part for the Prosperous Garden area, I see that the you, you have extended the uh, ventilation outlet to 500 uh, by 570 meters, but I still think that the suspended uh, particulates and the nitrogen oxide is still too high and it is not compliant with uh, current uh, caps. Now, look at this chart here. I see that this uh, ventilation, uh, this out outlet is so cl close to Prosperous Garden and it is 100 meters to this A-grade uh, residential building, 200 meters to the, uh, to the sports ground, which means that those people doing exercise in the sports ground will be uh, breathing in these particulates. There is a area nearer to the sea, and the uh, Air can be, uh, the egress can be in this area closer to the sea. Why do you not design it that way? Now, look at this uh, ventilation outlet. It is very near to Oiman Chun uh, Estate, and this is very near to the densely populated uh, areas. And that is why you have to elevate this uh, uh, outlet to uh, very high above the ground, but still I see that it is not compliant with uh, air quality as uh, uh, the WHO, uh, that is the WHO standard. It's not compliant. Mr. Chair, in doing the environmental assessment, this is what we are proposing is incompliant with the uh, I'm sorry, I just want to uh, stop you. You say you're compliant. You were about to say you're a compliant. But uh, tw that was in 2013. The WHO in 2014 had revised its uh, cap. Mr. Chair, I understand the member's concern. And I understand the question. At the time of designing this project, we have, on the basis of the uh, adverse effect of the project, we have tried to minimize that. And in so doing, we have introduced an air purification system. And the, we have, would have 
uh, taken out 80 percent of the pollutants, which is very effective in improving the environment. Uh, Mr. Chair, even with the purification system, it is still above the WHO standard. Uh, Ms. Lau, we clearly understand your point. There's no need to repeat yourself again and again. Uh, I haven't said my point. Now, there are three purification systems, but in this uh, heavily affected area, there are only two purification systems. That's what I wanted to add. All right. Now, Mr. Chair, we have tried our best to comply with the, and we have complied with the law which was in place then at the time of design of the project. As for the other question, perhaps uh, Mr. Chu, the expert, would want to answer that question. Yes, in our environmental protection uh, assessment or EAI, uh, we have considered the eastern part and the western part and also the ventilation outlet. For example, the outlet nearer to the sea. In our modeling, we have uh, completely considered the purification system and also the direction of the outlets and also the residential area and the sensitive areas. We have considered all these. Now, the member asked whether we do not care where there are uh, no residents in a particular area and uh, we do not care what the air quality is in that area. That is not true. We have taken air samples all around and we uh, definitely are in compliance with the uh, environment requirements. Uh, I would want a written submission and also for the middle part, how high is a ventilation outlet and also the design and direction of uh, the three ventilation outlets after the meeting. Please provide that information. Ms. Helena Wong, four minutes. Now, this project had was discussed in the previous session, and now it's brought on to this lecture session, and we have talked uh, many times with the residents and relevant parties, and it is at this very last uh, 11th hour that, that you put up this uh, re uh, so-called compromised proposal that is not good, and also you have not consulted the residents of Prosperous Garden, and that is not ideal. Now, in terms of the diversion uh, for traffic and to therefore lower the uh, traffic congestion in the area, we are in agreement to this proposal. But for prosperous garden residents, uh, over the long years, they have they need to put up with the uh, very heavy traffic along Gascoigne Road and to suffer the congestion as well as the poor air quality. I grew up in Yamate area, so I am clearly in the know as to um, the effect of traffic, not just on Prosperous Garden, but uh, the entire the Yamate area, the Jade Bazaar, the public uh, car park, the library, the dermatology uh, clinic, the maternity clinic, etc. All these will be affected. Some are reprovisioned, some will not be reprovisioned. The Jade Bazaar, where will it be relocated? We do not know. The public parking, uh, you're tearing it down. The government is tearing down all public uh, parking facilities. Is that good use of land? I'm not in agreement. Now, coming back to Prosperous Garden, I have a few questions to ask. First of all, the residents request extending the length of the enclosure. And the administration say anything longer than 230 meters will become a tunnel and you need special fire safety facilities. Well, we understand that viewpoint. Now, to the north, you have extended 40 meters. Uh, the residents had requested 60 meters. That's falling short by 20 meters. Now, on the basis of 40 meters and from the Catholic school going forward, plus 110 meters, together that makes 150 meters. And 
This is far from the 230 meters which would make a tunnel. So you still have 80 meters which can be installed with a total enclosure. Have you considered this? And that is slightly adjust your proposal. That is extend the full enclosure from block one and two, extend it about 80 meters. So this enclosure would total be in total be 230 meters. So still you would not be running foul of the fire safety uh, requirements. And by so doing, you'll be able to take into account the considerations of the residents. That's the first point. Second point, I see that you have uh, found a Professor Lau from the UST saying that this would not adversely affect the air quality of Prosperous Garden. Now, for this proposal, uh, we have not seen the diagram concerning these uh, vertical outlets. Now, because what you are suggesting is that for the the uh, point further away from Prosperous Garden, you have vertical outlets. So how many of these outlets will there be? How tall will they be? How wide will they be? There's no information. And on what basis would the good professor be able to say that there is no adverse effect on air quality, please? And also there is no comparison of noise and air quality. Uh, well, your time is up. Please, uh, Mr. Chairman, would you want to answer your, the question? Uh, we will provide the detailed information after the meeting. Um, but the member mentioned this 230 meters. Is there room for further extension? Well, the problem is not all that simple. Of course, 230 meters, any longer than that, will require uh, fire safety considerations. But in fact, members would have noticed as well that there are the two sections, front and back, there are two uh, totally enclosed noise enclosures, and that's the red part in the diagram. For these totally enclosed uh, parts, they will affect each other, and it would also affect the middle part as well. And so if there is any change to be done in this regard, it is not as simple as using the entire 230 meters. It is because for the middle section, for the gap between the enclosures, if we are to narrow that gap, then we will need to do some uh, modeling for this gap area between the two enclosure to see whether we indeed can narrow that gap between the two enclosures and still be compliant with fire safety requirements. We need that kind of uh, computer modeling uh, analysis to ascertain whether we can indeed narrow that uh, gap. Now, with our compromise proposal, we are confident that we will comply with fire safety requirements. Uh, Mr. Chair, well, they've not asked whether by extending another 70 meters or 80 meters, this uh, full enclosure, whether you will run foul of uh, fire safety requirements. Hi, uh... It's not as simple as just consulting the FSD whether it is feasible or not. Rather, we have to uh, carry out a computer modeling data analysis, and the analysis will have to be submitted to the FSD for it to examine. So at this stage, we can't uh, promise uh, whether the enclosure can be extended or not. So have you done any computer modeling? to tell the residents uh, what will be the impact on noise and air quality with this new proposal. All right, you just uh, said that Dr. Lau finds it acceptable, but what, what 
what advice did Dr. Lau give you? Can you give us um, a supplementary paper on that? For sure, Chairman. Mr. Nathan Law. Uh, the transport panel banned uh, the uh, central current route, and yet uh, it, uh, today uh, the administration jumped the queue and uh, proposed this item here. But you have to convince us that the um, objection from residents have been addressed fully. Now, we are told last time that a uh, ZAMI enclosure over the whole length uh, would uh, be infeasible, and today this compromise model is here. It's because the administration wants to wants the project approved uh, in a piecemeal manner. Given that this is a new scheme, I think you should have conducted fresh public consultation. If you have a compromise model which you think might be acceptable to the public, you should consult the residents first instead. Uh, of uh, bypassing the original procedures, I really uh, challenge uh, the way the government handles this matter. So I'd like to ask the administration: Is it going to conduct a comprehensive public consultation based on the um, compromise model? What I don't want to see is once we approve the main project. It is fate company, and then the administration will say that uh, the supplementary works will have to be um, carried out, even though there is objection from the residents, and that's the worst scenario. So I like to ask, uh, what is the consultation process? Will you get the support of the residents first before you carry out the main works? Under Secretary, CKR involves several districts with um, wide implications. In the projected public consultation uh, done in the past, most of the issues have been addressed. So it may not be necessary to uh, carry all things carry all things out anew because of uh, the amendment here. Well, residents of the uh, Prosperous Garden are here. Why don't you tell us uh, whether you have a timetable for uh, further consultation? Well, I was about to uh, say this. We believe that the project can proceed. And we believe what we do will um, bring improvement to the uh, Prosperous Garden. So what we propose here are further improvements. Well, um, time is limited. Can you ask the Under Secretary to answer quickly? Yes, I'll be flexible with time. Under Secretary. In order not to affect the uh, construction of CKL, we propose this compromise scheme, and uh, it will be a PWSE project. And there will be a due public consultation, con gazetto, and all the requirements will be satisfied. I really said this when I answer uh, other members' questions. Yes, I've heard all this. The question is whether you have any timetable. Will it be a fair company once we have passed your project here? And um, even though the uh, final proposal is not acceptable to the residents. As I said, the community at large support this project. Most members here also support the project. The question is how we can improve on an already a good project. Here's the answer to my question. Oh, what is the timetable? Will you create an affair company? Well, they have already started the preparation work of uh, the uh, CKW, so they will start the work. ASAP. I uh, wanted to ask uh, one further question. All right, right. Every time the administration proposes a project, they would use a threatening uh, uh, approach. For instance, uh, uh, 
the uh, cost effectiveness or cost benefits and uh, also a further delay will lead to a uh, cost overrun. I think this account uh, to a threat, amount to a threat to the residents and also legislators. If you don't pass uh, this project, uh, there will be a price to pay. So can you uh, give me a calculation, a formula for coming up with this $3 billion of economic loss due to poor air quality? Uh, the Secretary. We have to consider all consequences of uh, whether a project should or should not be done. So uh, as for our reference, and the public should also uh, be uh, informed. So it's just our analysis. Can you tell us how you come up with this calculation? I'll see if uh, the um, director can give us a supplementary paper. On that, yes, we can provide the uh, supplementary paper on that. Mr. Wu Chi Wai, four minutes. Thank you. Uh, C. K. L. Uh, Stratos, a few district councils, and uh, they have their respective views on the project. Of course, we hope that ultimately all the district councils can um, support. The CRK, but there are still outstanding issues that have to be addressed, uh, such as uh, the views of um, Yao Qimong. I hope that they can convince the Yao Qimong District Council. After all, other district councils have approved, but of course, I don't want the approval from the other two district councils uh, to a uh, force. Um, to further to press ahead with this project, the director told us that in between 2002 and 2016, uh, the uh, cost uh, increase is about one percent per year. If I heard correctly, oh sorry, it's three percent per year over the past 16 years. And then uh, you you're prepared for a six percent uh, price adjustment every year from now. So all projects will uh, have a different outcome in terms of uh, monitoring if different. Uh, Contracts are used. Different contract forms are used. I'd like to know for CKL what is the most cost-effective contract form in the tendering process. Uh, what kind of um, contract are you thinking about? Uh, the uh, provision for price adjustment. Is uh, twelve point six billion dollars. What if the price to increase is not six percent per year as projected? Then can the um, provision for price adjustment be valued to uh, cover uh, other project costs? I'd like to know uh, how you deal with this, Mr. Jong. Thank you, Mr. Wu, for your question. In particular, you asked about the figures on the slide. We, I, the uh, cost estimate in 2002 was ten million dollars, and as at September 2016, the estimate uh, was fifteen odd billion dollars. So uh, the price adjustment per year was around three odd percent. Given uh, the long period of time in between, sometimes uh, the adjustment was higher, sometimes lower, and that's historical figures. Different trades. Now, Different traits, for instance, uh, tunneling, tunneling, 
uh, different trades may have different uh, price adjustment. So uh, we uh, calculated it according to um, historic figures. And as for the contract form, because uh, we are talking about tunneling, as I said, we uh, use a traditional mode of contract, and that is to uh, calculate the quantity compared with a pick fixed price concert. The uh, merit here is we can measure it. Now, if tunnel, the tunnel is a rock, then uh, we have a price uh, for drilling into rocks for making a tunnel, and that can reflect the unique characteristics of a project. Now, if it is civil engineering or building, then it's different. For superstructure, we may be able to have a more accurate idea of what's involved beforehand, but for tunnels, we might have data to tell us the uh, ground conditions, but since uh, excavation has not started, there are still uncertainties. So for recalculation of works quantity is a um, better or a safer way of um, doing it. And as for price adjustment, If the actual price adjustment due to inflation is not as much as we project here, there can be savings, and therefore we'll be able to keep the money. And uh, the funding sought here is just an estimate. Are uh, all the uh, items in our breakdown are just estimate. For some items, the actual cost may turn out to be higher, some lower. So this is an overall is an overview. We may spend a little bit more in some items, a little bit less in others. In other words. If uh, the price adjustment turns out to be lower than projected, and if uh, in some other items uh, the spending is higher, you can via this fund to cover that cost. Is that right? This is an estimate, and therefore the finance committee of the LegCo, uh, the the approval, there is no this particular limit to that. Uh, approval. Uh, what was your question again? What I want to ask is that the total funding will be approved, and what is uh, what's within that funding can be adjusted by you. Is that is that how it goes? Well, Mr. Chair, the well internally, we will look into very clearly the. If there is any adjustments we want to make, we have some internal guidelines. That is, the, the LegCo will approve a total funding, and we will have internal adjustments on the itemization, and we have some guidelines on that. Um, Mr. Chair, well, actually, I have a small son, and uh, I can tell you that the sound barrier does not affect or benefit me. And at night, when there's traffic passing by, my son uh, still wakes up. Uh, that's uh, just to uh, let you know. And also, now for the uh, Catholic, the Yamate Catholic School, I know that to uh, on the north side of this building, it is stairs. Uh, I would like to know whether all the classrooms will not be facing this uh, affected area. But on the other hand, 
if the classrooms, the rooms, uh, uh, the classrooms, the, the windows all face the um, that uh, traffic and the uh, area, uh, then I would say that it is not sufficient because when I was small, I studied in a school which was next to a main thoroughfare and it was very noisy. And uh, just now, Lo Kun Chong said that uh, I do not know how long he's not been to Kun Tong. I do not know whether uh, um, uh, uh, Long Hair has been to uh, Kowloon Tong. Well, one time you were in going to Kowloon Tong, you wanted to go to uh, RTHK, I think, and I asked you to go take the MTR instead because of traffic congestion along this Gascoigne Road. So. This tr project will have to be done because the central Kowloon route uh, actually alleviates uh, traffic along Lei Yumun, Yao Ma Te, etc. Uh, but, and this is taking too long. This is 2017 already. And you are still, this uh, route is still not done. In fact, I, I have graduated from university uh, 10 years, and it's been so many years uh, this, been, this has been discussed since 2013, and it's not completed. Uh, I have asked two questions, uh, one of which is the uh, Catholic school and the f uh, which direction the windows of the classrooms face. Well, Mr. Chair. We are exactly talking about the traffic of the central Kowloon uh, traffic, and that is why we need and urgently need the central Kowloon route, and that is why we have come to the Public Works Subcommittee with this new compromise proposal. That is why uh, we have done it at this time, because it is so urgent. Now, as for the uh, sound barrier, that is a detail which I would want our consultant, the expert, to tell us about this uh, noise uh, enclosure, the length of it. Mr. Chu, well, f for the design and length of the enclosure, it will, uh, it will not exceed one decibel in terms of uh, reduction of noise and further extension. No, no, that's not what I asked. I want to know for the Catholic school, Yamate Catholic school, primary school, uh, what is the effect on the classrooms and where do the windows of the classroom face? That was my question. Well, Mr. Chair, concerning whether the classrooms or people in the classroom can through the window see this area, well, According to my information here, this uh, Yamate Catholic School, the noise level is already lower than 60 decibels. And also, according to the EIA report, the road traffic uh, noise engendered is also not higher than 65 decibels. Mr. Chair, if he doesn't have the information, he can answer me the question next time. Now, uh, can you please, perhaps uh, after the meeting, uh, give us a written submission on the alleviation of noise uh, effect or pollution on the uh, Catholic school? Now, as Mr. Chair, we understand that this project is huge in scale. And it affect, and it's complex, and it affects some of the uh, buildings along the route. We understand that, and once this project starts, we would want to be able to complete it as early as possible. And that's why, in the implementation of construction, we will find ways to expedite the process. So please be assured that we will be doing that, Dr. Chan Chiu Hong. Four minutes. Now, Mr. Chair, we've talked about this project many times, and the uh, transport panel did not uh, approve this. And I have been concerned about this project for a long time as well, and uh, about the health of the residents 
and the air quality uh, affected by this uh, central Kowloon route, and there are schools, uh, there are old age homes, and there are um, uh, y young children's centers, etc. All these will be affected. And as for cost, from 10 billion, it has risen to uh, 420.3 billion. And I was told just now, first of all, that that increase is astounding. And I heard just now that this has to be done, that this project has to be uh, done. Is it true at whatever cost? I mean, we have been talking about we. This is like um, 3.2 billion per kilometer, and the Sha Tin Central uh, Link is some 4.4 billion per kilom kilometer. And for this project, we're talking about 10.8 billion per kilometer. This is uh, sky high in terms of cost. Do we have to? Uh, do it uh, for any project. We'll have to do it what, at whatever cost and at whatever cost overrun. Is that what we're faced with? And then come back and explain all these. Uh, say we say that 4.7 had been added to the cost because there will have to be a protection and uh, for the safety of the. Uh, buildings, the structure of the buildings, and also their potential redevelopment value. Well, my question, why is this 4.7 uh, extra cost? Is it be because of miscalculation in the first instance at the point of design, or is it because of extra additional environmental requirements that you have to Increase is 4.7 billion, and what about these uh, mm, heritage sites? These heritage sites were they not there at the time, back a few years ago? All these factors that lead to cost overrun were they not in existence then? Why have they all of a sudden appeared? And uh, courses overrun. Well, do we have to build these projects and save on welfare, save on other necessary expenditures? If it's projects, we have to pour in the money. The fourth point, uh, zero reclamation. Is this something new again? The fifth uh, point, Fire safety requirements. Were these fire safety requirements not in existence? Are these new in the past 10 years? The 60, uh, 600 million, how much is it to meet new fire safety requirements? Well, do we have to rubber stamp all uh, expenditure applications for any projects? Mr. Yao? Mr. Chair. It is true for many of these items that at the time of estimate, they were not included. Afterwards, there were a lot more new requirements. For example, reclamation, sea reclamation, it was not as stringent then. These are truly additional. In the $10 billion estimate, in fact, there were a lot that which were not taken into consideration. That is also true. But there are also additional requirements as well. And then costs have also increased. This $14.5 billion, how many are d due to additional requirements, please? Mr. Chair. Most of these, I would say, basically all of them are additional requirements or due to additional requirements. Second point, the calculation, we have done the calculation. The return is three billion per year in terms of internal rate of return. It is 7.5 percent. 
compared to the Island South Link and the Central Shatin Link, this internal rate of return is even higher. We do calculate the IRR. It is not that we pour money into any project. It is with social and economic benefit that we propose these um, projects. What about these heritage sites? Are these new again? Uh, yes, the secretary. Now, Mr. Cheng asked that question, and in fact, I have already explained it before. Uh, as for the details, we'll provide further information, but I would want to add one point here, and that is in the urban area, for there to be any tunnel project in this kind of densely built up area, the cost is indeed going to be expensive. Yes, the cost is expensive. I admit to that. But we have done a lot of things to lower the cost as much as possible. And for uh, similar tunnels, what are the construction costs, if I can provide you? the information. For central Wan Chai, uh, for per kilometer cost, it is 2.6 billion. But for this um, Kowloon trunk, it is 2.1 billion per kilometer for the central Kowloon route. And there are a lot of similarities between these uh, two projects. The length is more or less the same, and there has to be sea reclamation as well. If we are to build a tunnel in the densely uh, built-up urban area, because of all kinds of environmental limitations and restrictions, the cost will definitely and inevitably be high. Now, to answer uh, Mr. Cheung's question uh, concerning some of the details on cost overrun if, uh, or increase in estimate cost, if you can just uh, provide more information through written submission. Now, we will have another meeting, and that is on the 24th of June, uh, 9 o'clock. It is a Saturday. We will have a continuation meeting. Thank you. Thank you for coming to the meeting. Thank you for the observers and the panel.